Hey everybody, welcome back to TCS Start Frogs. My name is Travis, and today I want to talk about the basic care and husbandry of Ranitomea imitator. And even though I'm going to be talking mainly about imitators today, everything that I'm going to tell you guys is going to also apply to other species of Ranitomea. They have the same basic care. The area where I would say that it gets a little bit different is when you get into breeding, but I'm not going to go into breeding in this video. I'm going to save that for a future video. So without further ado, let's go get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is imitator size. As you can see from these photos, they're quite small frogs. As adults, they're going to be just under the size of a quarter. These are all adult frogs in the photos. And I generally keep these frogs in a male female pair. Despite their small size, they can be rather aggressive and I have had individuals stress other frogs out to the point of the other frog passing away. These frogs could be kept in groups in a larger terrarium, but I would still suggest keeping a very close eye on them because as I mentioned before, they are quite aggressive despite their small size. One of the reasons that I love keeping imitators is that Despite their small size, they have a lot of personality. And in my experience, compared to other species of Ranitomea, they're fairly bold. There's also a lot of different colors and patterns within the different locales of Imitator. And that makes them very interesting to me because there's such a wide variety of options to choose from when you're looking for a frog to keep. Although I might be a little bit biased because these were the first species of Ranitomea that I ever kept and I have not really kept too many other species since keeping these because I enjoy them so much. Next I wanted to talk about how I keep my imitators. So this is just a quick little video of the rack that I keep them on. I keep all of my pears in 10 gallon terrariums and I prefer that they be top opening rather than front opening. I've found that with small frogs that are very fast, they can easily jump out of a front opening terrarium and sometimes without you even noticing. So for that reason, I prefer the top opening terrariums. And I also think it's very important to make sure that the, the tank is nice and cycled before you introduce frogs into the tank. I usually like to wait at least several weeks, if not a month or more. I think a month is about the ideal time to let a tank set up before you add in frogs. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for the lack of leaf litter in my tanks, but these are mainly set up for breeding. They're very simplistic. and. I've found that by adding leaf litter, it gets really mucky with how often I spray my tanks. So the majority of my tanks have pea gravel and some very simple plants. And as you can see, they just have a small bit of ventilation at the top. That being said, you can keep imitators in larger tanks. I would say 10 gallons is the minimum. and. You can of course keep them in any kind of display setup. It doesn't have to be a simple setup like I have them set up in. There's a lot of different options that they'll thrive in. As far as temperature and humidity go, in my experience, 70 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal for a daytime temperature. Anything below 70 prolonged just seems like it is a little bit dangerous for the frogs and anything into the mid to high 80s for long periods of time is also dangerous. As far as humidity, I generally aim for 70 to 90% humidity, but it fluctuates with misting and the amount of ventilation you have. It's also important to note that ventilation plays a very important role in the health of the terrarium as well as the frogs. Good ventilation can help prevent bacterial and fungal infections in your frogs. Next, let's talk about their diet. As with most dart frogs, the staple diet for Renatomea imitator 
would be flightless or wingless fruit flies. They also really enjoy springtails and will feed on small isopod species as well as mites and other small insects. It's always important to make sure that your feeder insects are dusted with a high quality calcium and mineral supplement. That's the sound that a male imitator makes when it's trying to find a mate. And if you keep these guys in high humidity, they'll almost constantly make that noise. One of the things that I find really fascinating about imitators is that they're great parents. The males will actually carry their tadpoles to a place with water and the females will take care of the tadpoles as they grow. This aspect of parental care makes them very entertaining to watch in the terrarium and can be very rewarding to see them raise their own froglets. All right, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I hope you go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys have any questions or comments, please write them down below. You can also reach me through any of my social media. I'll leave all the links in the description. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.